What was the toughest question you got at lunch? Mm, they, well, somebody asked me who my favorite comedian was of all time, and I had, I, I could think of a lot of my like, but I didn't want to pick. pick you a you didn't have. What are your top three? Well, uh, I, I came up with Billy Crystal. I saw him do a performance once, in, but uh, you know, I go I go back to the days of Jack Benny and some of those. So I I, I could I could come up with names you've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are looking back on those days of Jack Benny and they're thinking where did they go especially this week when you get news like US is no longer the richest middle class in the world now it's now it's Canada yeah. holding that position how troubling is that well I read that story and I, I, I don't know exactly how it was measured but all I know is that our GDP per capita you know is, is it what 52,000 or something or 51 or 52,000 we are a very 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 rich country and it's gone up in my lifetime, one person's lifetime, six for one in real terms, not inflation, just real terms. So if you imagine my father and mother, you know, in the waiting room in 1930 and thinking their little boy would see something that was going to be six times per person output in, in the country, it's a remarkable country. And, and, and it's not over yet. I mean, this country will be doing better 10 and 20 and 30 years from now than it is now. If the middle class were to continue losing ground, though, as as the by middle, this measure, they have lost a I, significant I, amount of ground. Can that thesis really hold that you're bullish on America forever? Yeah, yeah that is it's not a good thing. I mean, it, the Forbes 400 this past year had an aggregate net worth of two trillion, two trillion and 20 billion. That's an all time record by some margin. In 1982, the first year they uh, I believe it was the first year they did it, it was it was like 90, 90 billion. So it's, it's up 21 or 22 times for one since 1982. That has not been true of the middle class. So it is really true that the, particularly the ultra rich, have gotten far, far wealthier, and more and more of the national pie has moved to them and away from, uh, away from the middle class. What do you see as the number one driver of that trend of the acceleration of inequality and the disparity between the top and the bottom? I think it's actually a natural consequence of a market system over time that gets more and more specialized. And the market system is wonderful. I mean, it will produce goods and services like nothing else, and it will produce what people want. It, it encourages people to go into the right jobs and all that sort of thing. So you don't want to fool around too much with a market system. It, that, it has produced a bountiful America. But it will more and more leave behind the people whose skills aren't well adapted to a market system. Let's talk about what Americans are seeing now. You have the stock market near all-time highs, but on the flip side of things, most investors, the average investors, have their lowest amount of trust in stocks ever. Well, they're, they're wrong. You think they're wrong? <laughs> well, it, it, trust in stocks is trust in American business. I mean, that, that's all stocks are as a part of American business. And, and American business has done very, very well for people for a long, long time. Now, there's lots of interruptions, and there can be market panics, and there can be all kinds of things. But business will keep turning out more and more goods, and they'll be earning more and more money over time. And the people that own American business are going to do well over time. I don't have the faintest idea what's going to happen next year, or two years from now, or next week, or next month. But I do know that 10 years from now, and 20 years from now, and 30 years from now, the people that have owned stocks will have done well. Do you think, though, that we could be at a tipping point here? If if corporate America in this year doesn't make big investments, in some cases do some wage increases, and really think about growing and expanding their businesses, does that hurt the framework of this recovery? Well, I think m most businesses are thinking about it. Uh, I mean, every business is trying to sell more goods this year than last year, including all the ones Berkshire has. We spent $11 billion on plant and equipment last year, and we'll spend more this year. American business, it wants to do more business, and, and they're doing it. I mean, that's what's happened in the last four years, ever since the fall of 2009, year after year. Our railroad is carrying a lot more goods than it was two or three or four years ago. There's somebody else's goods, but we're moving them. So, Which is always a good sign for well, the economy and recovery sure. and movement. Oh, sure. There, uh, our economy is, is moving forward, and it's been moving forward ever since the fall of 2009. It, 
has not been galloping forward, and uh, but it has been moving forward at a perfectly decent clip. Is there something that would get it galloping right now today? Well, that's that's what everybody wants. But you know, I mean, sure, you can drop a million dollars from the sky on every household, and, and they'll rush out and spend it, and you know, money won't be worth much after that. But you can create demand various various ways in the society, but. The trouble is in, econ in economics, you always have to say, and then what? And there's a big and then what to, to pushing that forth, sort of stimulus forth. You've been very vocal about the housing recovery. If I am a potential first time home buyer in most of the markets in America, I've got a job, prices haven't increased so much in my community. Do I buy a house this spring? What does Warren Buffett well, say? I, well, I say if, if, if you plan to live in the locale where you are for some time, I don't, I don't think you should buy with the idea of selling it a year later or two years later. If you plan to live in it for a significant period of time, by all means, buy it. It was one of the best purchases I ever made, you know, 55 years ago, 56 years ago. I bought the house I'm living in today. Brought all kinds of happiness. Today, you can buy it with very, very cheap money. I mean, you are, you are getting a terrific deal on the mortgage now. So, so if I... If, if How I thought, much longer, by the way, do you think that'll last? I don't know. I wish I, if I knew that, I'd, I'd go out and speculate in treasury futures. I don't, I'm no good at that sort of thing. 